Disadvantaged communities have been hit hard by the national lockdown and COVID-19 pandemic, and as a result, they have been struggling to feed themselves and their families. Now, well-known international chef Margot Yansa stepped up to the plate by offering a helping hand to feed those in need. Chef Yansa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good good morning. Morning. Your story is so inspiring, you know. Back in 2009 is when you started a feeding charity right here in Franshoek called Isabello. You know, why was there such a need for this and why was it important for you to start this? Well, you know, I think as a, a, a Franshoek is a very successful village. Um, it's a very wealthy village. It's known for tourism, for food and wine. And it always felt kind of skew, you know, that we were busy with the most beautiful ingredients, yet there were people right next door to us really um, suffering uh, from not having anything to eat, and especially the children. So we started with In Le Cartier Francais. I was the executive chef there um, with making a very nutritious muffin once a week, and we served it to a creche with 70 kids. That was in 2009. Uh, and then the support really grew over the years, and we were prepared preparing food um, in the morning in the kitchen between 8 and 10, which was then distributed by our drivers of the hotel and the restaurant to all the schools that we were supporting. I left Le Cartier Francais as chef in 2017, so that's three years ago, and I took Isabella with me and have, in the last three years, managed to grow it from 1,300 children to 1,500 children that were receiving a nutritious meal every school day in two primary schools and two play schools. Uh, and obviously at lockdown, that stopped. Oh. I couldn't feed the children at the schools anymore. Bless your heart. That has just given me so much goosebumps. But fast forward to 2020, where do you find yourself now with different organizations and initiatives? Chris Erasmus, a foliage together with the Franschhoek disaster management team, kickstarted an initiative to start cooking for the community. And obviously with Isabella not being able to feed the children at school, I immediately said, I'm in, let me see what I can do. I still had quite a lot of food available and I've opened up the charity to raise funds specifically for the friendship disaster management and it's really been amazing. I'm so glad to hear that and I'm sure you know preparing a large amount of food like these parcels must be so much work that goes into it and use so much produce. Where does all these ingredients come from? I um, received my permit to travel and to assist and jumped in and we've all kind of tapped into suppliers and people and we're reaching out and we're saying, if you have surplus, if you have extra, please, we can turn it into anything as chefs. And so we started with Foliage and Le Con Francais and we started cooking in there and we received uh, butternuts from a farm. And then the uh, Epice Kitchen, which falls under the La Colombe Group, opened their doors and we've been um, cooking in their kitchen, which is fantastic. They've got a marvelous walk-in fridge and a walk-in freezer that we are filling with food and we've had huge companies help with truckloads, literally, of vegetables. The community of Franschhoek knows that they can drop anything at Foliage. And um, so we kind of do a call every day and say today we would really love to receive beans and soup mix and lentils because it really makes all the vegetable meals uh, even more nutritious. And then people drop off. Uh, they know they can drop it there. Uh, this week we are, are packing um, 3,000 parcels. Um, that will go out to all the needy households that have been uh, identified. The, the Franschhoek Disaster Management Fund is consisting of, of like over 120 people at the moment, and it's really uh, run in terms of an incident command structure. So we're taking it very seriously. We are not running soup kitchens. We are packing the food in individual portions, and they are frozen and then delivered with the dry food parcel to make sure that social gatherings are obviously not happening. I love that, and you're obviously still following uh, these restrictions, but how can the public still get involved and help you and assist you in this time that you guys need it? The funds are really necessary to keep electricity going in the kitchens, to keep the gas coming in, and to, to make sure we can make these food parcels.
All the chefs are giving their time for free. We now have five restaurants that have opened their doors. And so the community spirit is amazing. We do need funds. A parcel costs 250 rand and will help a family in need go a long way. So donations are the best way forward at this point and spread the news. Well, hopefully this platform will maybe urge people out there to donate and maybe sponsor something for a family in need. Or if you know anybody that has food containers or that could sponsor us with uh, any type of food that is nutritious, we have an amazing team of chefs and we are really, we are making some delicious and nutritious, wholesome food. Chef Margot, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to hearing more of your inspiring stories in the near future. Thank you very much and thanks for your time. Thank you. What an amazing feat to Chef Marco Jansa reaching out to the struggling communities of Franz Hook. Now, with the help from the public, businesses and local chefs, she prevents children and families from going hungry. If you do want to help and support, head on over to our Facebook page to find out more.